Hello, my name is Bishop Daniel Muggenberg, and I'd like to reflect with you on the gospel passage that we will read on the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time that comes to us from chapter 18 of Luke's gospel. In this particular chapter, Jesus is continuing to teach us about the importance of prayer, but especially about the right kind of prayer. And he does so by presenting a parable about a Pharisee and a tax collector, both of whom go into the temple to pray. So Jesus uses these two contrasting types of prayer as a way of helping us recognize ways in which we may be praying incorrectly, actually. Now that's very important because again, the Lord does want us to pray, but he wants us to pray in the right way. So let's first of all, look at the prayer of the Pharisee. We're told that the Pharisee stands and raises his eyes to heaven, and he begins by thanking God, but thanking God that he is not like the rest of humanity. Um, he's thanking God for how different he is from all of them. The Pharisee then goes on to speak about how much he does in his righteous religious works. He pays tithes on everything. You know, he does all of these other great works of faith um, and how much, you know, how, how many spiritually good things he does. Um, and then he particularly says that he is grateful that he is not like, you know, this tax collector. So the prayer of the Pharisee, first of all, is a prayer that is very self-centered. It's all about him. It's all about him proclaiming his greatness to God as though God should be so lucky and so grateful that the Pharisee is taking the time to pray in the first place. That shows us someone who is extremely self-absorbed and someone whose prayer has basically become self-idolatry because it is all about the Pharisee proclaiming his own goodness, his own self-righteousness. Anytime that we feel that we have accomplished our own righteousness or that we don't need God's merciful forgiveness, then we fail to ask for it. And that's what the Pharisee is doing. Secondly, the Pharisee is very, very wordy in his prayer. Wordy in that um, he's doing a lot of talking, you know? I mean, Jesus goes on and on telling us all these things the Pharisee prays for. When our prayer becomes a monologue, rather than a conversation with God, then we have really not left a lot of room for the Lord to speak his word to us. Prayer is always meant to be a conversation. And as we express ourselves in prayer, we need to provide at least as much time and opportunity to listen for God's response, to listen in silence for what the Lord is saying to us. We should not let our prayer ever become a monologue like that of the Pharisee. The other thing that the Pharisee does is he does point out a lot of very good religious works. You know, he observes the law, he pays tithes, he does all of these things. But all of those things that he's doing, all those religious works are really meant to bring him into greater communion uh, with God and neighbor. That's the purpose of our life of faith. It's not to make us better than others. It's not to make us feel grateful that we're not like the rest of humanity. That's not what it's for. It's meant to actually open our heart to bring us closer to others and to God in greater communion and greater love. But that isn't what happened to the Pharisee. His religious works became a source of his own self-righteousness and became the basis of his condemnation of others. Anytime that's happening in our lives, um, we, we are actually doing ourselves a disservice uh, because it's alienating us from God and others rather than bringing us closer in communion with them. It's kind of challenging to think that religious works done for the wrong reason can actually be to our detriment. But that's what is happening to this Pharisee. And lastly, the Pharisee prays with something that we might call peripheral vision. Namely, he's thanking God, um, but he's also looking around. I'm not like the rest of humanity. 
Look at all those sinners. Look at all those people who aren't behaving correctly. Look at all those people who haven't studied like I have studied or all those people who aren't living their lives the way I am. You see, anytime that we find ourselves praying with peripheral vision, becoming judgmental of others, um, praying even in an act of condemnation of others or judgment of others or complaining to God about others, we are praying with peripheral vision as well, like the Pharisee. So Jesus wants us to recognize all of these tendencies in the Pharisee's prayer and to specifically recognize when we're doing them and to stop it. All right, so that's how we are not supposed to pray. Now let's look at the prayer of the um, tax collector. We're told that the tax collector doesn't even dare to come into the center of the temple. He stays in the very back. He doesn't even dare to raise his eyes to heaven. Instead, he simply beats his breast and looks down. And we're told that his prayer is amazingly humble, simple, and honest. Remember those three qualities, humble, simple, and honest, because those are the qualities that Jesus wants us to imitate in our prayer as well. So the, fair, or the, the, the tax collector's prayer is humble. He doesn't make any pretense. He doesn't tell God how lucky God is that he is taking time to pray. He doesn't tell God how great he is, he simply acknowledges that he is a sinner and he's asking for mercy. That's it, beating his breast, assuming responsibility for his own actions, his own failures, his own sins, knowing his own guilt, knowing his own inability to free himself of that guilt. He's coming to ask God's mercy. So that humility, that honesty, um, an honesty that doesn't try to whitewash over things, doesn't try to explain them or rationalize them away, but an honesty that takes responsibility for them and acknowledges that only in God will we find salvation, peace, healing, and forgiveness and asks for those gifts from the Lord. So humility, simplicity, and honesty. That's all that the tax collector had to offer. But his prayer was simple and it was pure. It was authentic. His prayer acknowledged God's greatness and his own need. And God can work with that, you know. So as we reflect on these two contrasts between these two types of prayer, hopefully we recognize some of those traps that we have fallen into, perhaps, traps that are exemplified by the Pharisee and hopefully also we recognize some of the ways in which we can pray more like the tax collector. Because as Jesus says, only the tax collector came home from the temple justified, not the Pharisee. He never acknowledged his need for God's justice, for God's forgiveness, or for God's righteousness. Because he all believed that he was already righteous in his own eyes. But the tax collector did. And so he received those great gifts of God. One last point about this parable. When we're told that the tax collector stands in the temple beating his breast, um, acknowledging his guilt, do you know that's why we do that at every Mass when we pray the penitential rite? And we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I have failed to do. And then we say, through my own fault, through my own fault, through my grievous fault. We are beating our breasts exactly like this tax collector. And that's where this action comes from, from this moment in Luke's gospel. Because we want to come to the Lord at every mass, knowing our need for a savior, and, and, and coming before the Lord in humility, honesty, and simplicity, um, and not praying with peripheral vision, judging those around us, separating ourselves from others by our own presumptive self-arrogance and self-righteousness, but simply acknowledging our need for a savior, our need to be forgiven, and our need to be redeemed, and praying for that, not just for ourselves individually, but for all God's people. 
So let's pray for the grace to learn from this parable so that we can pray more authentically, more effectively, like the tax collector. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will grant us a spirit of compunction, a spirit of honesty, a simplicity and humility, so that our prayer may never be an act of self-deception or even worse, of self-idolatry, but that we may come before you always as a beggar, as a sinner, knowing that you alone are the source of our salvation, the source of our righteousness, the source of our forgiveness. And Lord, we pray that you will grant us a keen knowledge and awareness of our need for that forgiveness so that we will always be humble in your presence. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.